crazies from South Africa, that's Frick and Pietru. We decided to chuck it all and we are now living and sailing full time on our new home, Sisu. Sailing Sisu. Pietro is awake and we got the big D out. So let's see what how long we can keep it. I think they say the, the wind is going to pick up around 3 o'clock this afternoon. So we will watch it out. Watch out for that. And then fill it again around 3 o'clock. But since till, until then, oh that's a big cruise liner over there. Until then, we will use the Cody and see what speed we can get. There's a little bit of increased boat speed. Our lure is also performing or jiggling quite nicely there. So hopefully we'll catch another, another fish. I think the second front is on its way. Cannot see much in the sky yet. But according to the weather predictions, it all it's all busy fizzing out, but we still will get quite a lot of wind. But for now, we are wing on wing, baby. We've got both of them out, it's 180 degrees. And we are doing good. I got the bungees up again. And perhaps I should just explain a little bit. <laughs> um, so this one here is going as far as you can up, up, <laughs> and all the way back. And what it is doing, it is basically pumping the sail. So if the sail is losing pressure, it will pull it tight and in this one that's going to that direction is basically in the half halfway between the block and and that's exactly what it's doing and the fastening point and what it's doing is if that one is pulling this one is taking up the slack so when a sail is hitting back, that sheet, sheet line is coming up with a huge speed. And then this one will break it. Very, very nice and soft break. So it will not whack like that. It will just go and zip, ease in. It's kind of like an ease in, ease out on the videos. And this board is a problem, but that the bungee is pulling it down will pull it between the board and the lifeline. And then I've got lines here that will actually stop it so it doesn't go deeper into between the board and maybe hook onto this thing or something like that. So that one is just this this configuration here is just making sure that the line is not going too deep 
into but it's a danger that if that one <laughs> is loosening enough and going on the other side on that side past uh, I think it will just rip this whole thing apart because there's a shitload of power on this this line I smell stuff happening here in the gully. There's some stuff cooking, I think. Mai. Ah. Mai and some vegetables. Ve ve uh, hopefully it's only capers as veggies. It's ca no, the, the veggies are in the microwave. Oh man, veggies. Green stuff, orange stuff and white stuff. Mm. Okay. This is the Mai Mai that we just caught. Fresh. Look at all the tomatoes here. It's doing quite good here. And I, uh, green stuff. Not really interested in that. Here's some chilies. How oh, is it? Chilies. See these new ones now. Coming out. Another new one. This thing is growing, eh? is on steroids. No. That is Nils and Jeff on the cage called Onyx. So Onyx is, is actually catching up with us. It's a 50, 50 something, I think a 54 foot. Yeah, 6.7 knots. My golly gosh, goodness, they're going fast. We're going this fast. Um, yeah, 17 meters, and we are 13. Quite a big catch, and yeah, you can see directly from behind. Let me try to do it from this side. Directly from behind, the true wind and the parent wind, and it's around 14 knots, and we're doing. I think there's a current against us because uh, let's look, let's look at this. Oh, no, that purple thing is going all around, so there's no current against us. So we're actually supposed to be quite okay. What are we doing? Oh, this is 6.7. Oh. Let's put the in the box on. So it's 5.6 for them. Seven, oh, that was a nice surf. So we're surfing quite good. Look at that. And that, I think that's we caught them maybe on a surf because they're doing a 5.6 if you look there. Yep, so wing on wing. Doing the painting on the surf, but we will do not too bad, a little bit more than 50% of true wind speed. So much different than the, the last time. <laughs> <laughs> now you've got a chef on board. Yeah, yeah, well, that's that's the first one I need to start with. You don't have to cook your own food. <laughs> You can sleep, night watches. I'm getting fatter instead of losing weight because I can eat now all sorts of other nice. Look at this. Just look at this. Nice goodies. Onions, capers, garlic, butter for the mind. So even all the drawers are still there. The drawers are still like that. 
we don't have any stoppers it's such a different sale this time so the doors are not even on this side we had any have any stoppers just check this it's nice and clean look at that side and it's quiet <laughs> huh? quiet. even the door is quiet <laughs> just quite wrong <laughs> just the lovely voice of Pietruet <laughs> that's around about so much easier remember last time I've been here it was wild this time oh, so relaxing and how many days are we in already this is uh monday tuesday it's wednesday today yeah it's our third day huh ah, hey you see so night nice. tonight and there was some confused these days but with the wind from the back it's always better and I'm in confused sea state when you go upwind. <laughs> Looks like we have fish on. <laughs> not a mai. Uh, it looks like a tuna something. So it's a little bonita. Well, it's a big bonita. And I'm very good. It's a good day on Sisu when <laughs> Pietro has to interrupt cooking, cooking fish. my my by actually preparing another fish. Unfortunately, we're not really very hard on sashimi. Yeah, okay. so, sorry guys, because I know this is perfect sashimi. Eat. Yeah, and it's fresh, fresh for the best sashimi ever. But we, but, uh, we, we need a lot of rice for this. <laughs> Look at that Oh my golly gosh goodness, you must smell this. <laughs> mm. Yum yum. That's more lovely. A very, very different sale for sure. <laughs> I need to take a picture for my repertoire. <laughs> wing on wing and we are basically following the wind not 100% but I downloaded the weather and then I saw we were supposed to go to that waypoint first and then go down across the Mana Passage and so we were going past all the banks and then go south but it turned out the wind is busy turning coming from that direction so it's is blowing like this and eventually it will blow like that so we we decided to take shortcut over these banks um, if I just put it on fishing yes it's on fishing and you can see it's 26 meters so that's okay it will it will make breaking waves and these waves are big so we just need to be careful for them and there's another one there uh, and that's 35 so that's quite deep um, and then these banks here I think that's the 10 meters so this one is dangerous for wave breaking uh, this one 9 meters also pretty pretty shallow it's deep enough, we will not eat a rock, but there's quite big swells coming past and every now and then I can show you guys this direction. From this side you guys can see every now and then there's a big wave catching us and it's because these waves are now, all well, the small ones, <coughs> it's now been 
suck into a, a gravity wave, they call it the gravity waves, so it's not anymore influenced by the wind. And these gravity waves, they can run very, very far. And they will just become slower and bigger until they cannot get any more energy and then it will dissipate again. But because of these waves, they might start breaking um, at that low, at that shallow depth. So we would rather try to avoid it. I think here comes another big one, so check. Oh, we surf quite nicely on them. So with all of that in mind, um, we decided to just turn with the wind and and then just follow the wind as the wind turns but it seems like we're already on our on our track to Mona Lisa so we will not turn more but the wind will start coming this direction like this so it just means our um, Genoa is going to start folding or backing and then we will be only on a on a big D and eventually I think I predict around here the wind is going to die and we ooh, yeah and we will start motoring all the way to there. But it looks like we still have one day and seven nine you see <laughs> but anyway like just over a day to get there then we're at the southern point. Hooray! This is now our fourth day. And the swells are just getting bigger, not because of the wind. But look at this. So last night we had a little bird here, a visitor, and it's just like, man, just makes you so dirty. <laughs> Each hiker, they should not leave their marks. Just just, live, just sleep on a boat and go, not messing around. This is such a very different sail. I can actually put my feet up and just watch the sails. And now the boat is handling right from here. And that honestly is just ginger beer. And Peter is also here. So we're just sitting here and relax. And the sun is on that side, so it's super hot that side. We're having calm seas, full of big falling seas, but not as big. The, first, the second and third day was a little bit sporty, but not too bad. But this is now proper one, Dublin sailing. The way Dublin sailing is supposed to be. <laughs> yeah, and you can see the Sisu is not behaving too bouncy. A whale just hit us. <laughs> it's just right here, right here, right here. Looks like a humpback. Oh my goodness. I was just too late. <laughs> we were seeing this. Look, even there, there's whales there. There's a couple of whales. Wow. <laughs> no ways. It came up right here and it just went bonks. Now it's gone. I just couldn't get the camera fast enough. It got interrupted. <laughs> <laughs> so 
so we were enjoying the forward cockpit because over here it's a little bit oh, oh. there right side Just, just on the edge of this. Check how deep this is. 800, 1000, 1000, 1000, 8000. This is the deepest part in the ocean. More than 8 kilometers deep. call it the Puerto Rico Trench and we just going now already where we are oh <laughs> they just stop it here the wind is busy dying down we are getting everything out of this <laughs> this dying wind you see, it's so light outside, but you <laughs> cannot see outside. <laughs> so the the code D is still out, and Pietro is still sleeping for another couple of minutes. So I'm going to try and keep. Is the boat is going, but uh, the bungee cores of, are working over time. I can see them in the moonlight. It's a very nice moonlight, almost full moon. But um, yeah, the sail is not happy, and there's a big passenger lining coming towards us. Going to miss us by less than a mile. <laughs> And with the sail, every now and then there comes a gust, it's gusting to 10 knots. And then um, we pick up speed and then we on a collision course with that passenger line. And then the wind died down and we find it. I think the moment I wake up Pietro, we're going to fill the Cody and start the engines. But it was a good run. It's it's our fifth day, just entering the fifth day. So for four days we had downwind sailing from the Bahamas to the Puerto Rico. That is just unheard of. Just unheard of. But yeah, we managed to cut to cold, two cold fronts. And the two cold fronts actually help us getting here. I think there's a third one that went through as well, but yes, it was just just amazing. It means maybe I should call it passenger liner and just make a deal with him. So I picked up something strange. Last time when I came through here, the current was going up around the corner and it was going up, 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 all the way to Turks and Caicos. Come on. Very fresh. Oh. So it was going up and it was just going like this. Um, you can see now it's going down here. But like that stream, it was going up. Okay, you cannot see now all the way up. The, 
but now the current on both sides is coming down here's the Mona passage you can clearly see the current is actually running like this and that side also like this and the last time when we did the, the minor sail it was actually going up now check this out so this is now windy and if you look at the current here if I'm going to move and the current is showing the same also going south and this one going all the way there going south and we are now oh, come on. we now at the blue dot and we were coming all the way from the north but we had a current coming all the way in but check this out uh, I don't see just a reflection just drop it so this is this is now windy here, yeah? and windy is showing more or less the same. Um, yesterday it was showing that the current was coming all the way, which we followed all the way, and you can see the current goes like that, and it goes like that. But check now if I move the time. It's getting less and less, so it's changing over time. So uh, I presume then, last time when we came past, current was going up and now the seasons may be changed and it's going down. Interesting. And my speed lock and GPS speed is confirming it. If you look here, it's a purple thing that says 1.8, 1.2, 1.1. Current is going in this direction. Ah, it is definitely different. And since the wind is blowing this direction, so it's no wind against current. So it's pretty calm. We have the Genoa, um, and the wind is actually quite okay. But since Pietro is still sleeping, I don't want to stop the engine and then wake her up um, so I think the engine has a very smoothing effect so let us sleep we're almost at the destination don't night watch tonight <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as you can see the sun is setting behind us so and we have still two hours to go it will be a night anchoring but the moon the full moon yes. tomorrow will be full moon it's almost there. And it's not a cloud in the sky, so it will be full moon anchoring. Natural light. And we selected a bay that is pretty big, um, so it's a very open space, huge sand bottom, no rocks, so I think it will be fine. Yep, so we'll, we won't be able to see other boats without a flashlight. <laughs> yeah, we don't need a flashlight. Well, often haven't we anchored at night with a flashlight. And lots of radar. So we will, um, I think, this just a little bit about this passage. It was pretty smooth sailing. And we had um, wind from the back almost... Downwind just 90, 95%. 95% of the time. Yeah. Um, we switched one day, I think on the third second day, third day, somewhere there, we switched on the engines because we were two between two uh, cold fronts yes. and um, there was no wind. <laughs> yeah, no wind. But yeah, it was a good selection. It was actually not, it was a serendipity, I think. Right? Yeah. Yeah. We selected the first cold front and we know we're going to have one day, perhaps two days of downwind sailing. We selected it as it was turning that we will get out of Georgetown over Long Island and as it turns, it will, we will turn with the wind and go downhill, basically downwind all the way. So we only had this one, one uh, cold front, the system is coming through. So we wanted to use that to turn and go down south. And then another one came past 
we've, that same morning it was predicted another one will come past so we we were kind of like busy on the one and then the other one hit us so that extended our run and then we had a lull where we switched on the engines and then we had the third one and the fourth one the fourth one just actually went now past here yeah. So we were kind of like, we, we predicted the first one and then we got lucky with the second one and then, yeah. wow, two more. <laughs> because of the cold fronts, we could take a shortcut. I would not recommend that if it was straight winds coming, go more offshore and then turn south. Um, because even with the downwind, we could feel the, the, the shores were pretty close and we got a little bit of bumpiness from the sides. Uh, and also the winds was changing so it was also confused like, because of the changing winds but yeah we took a shortcut and I don't think if you normally take the I-65 you go east until you hit I-65 and then you go down but we just went yeah. just just outside of all the islands and all the banks and then turned south I think we got three days discount yes we got three, yeah because of that we got three, three days, days discount, discount. Yeah. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> and we got whales. Oh, a whale broadened us. It came on the side of Sisu, and then he obviously realized this is not another whale. This is a big thing that's not he doesn't recognize, and he ducked, but he ducked too late. And the whole boat went doo doo. And then we heard now only that um, it is apparently oh, sufficient. Fishing nets. Apparently, between December and March every year, the humpback whales from the all over the Atlantic, or not all over, in the close proximity of the Atlantic Ocean, about 2,000 humpback whales that's come to. That's a lot. Come to Samana, Samana Bay in DR to um, have their little ones and to nurse them. So there is whale watching, and there is so many whales around. Amazing. We didn't even know that. Yeah. So, and, it, and we had them in 30 meters of water. It was very shallow. Yeah, Navi, 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 thanks. In true Spanish fashion, all the bright flags and stuff, they're doing a slow sail past here. I don't know if you can see that far, but I've got colorful flags on, so they must be celebrating something. Or they're just celebrating the weekend. These Spanish always have an excuse to have a party and music. That's what we love about them. In the Canaries as well, it's always a bright, colorful event, whatever they celebrate it. So I'm sure this must have been something, or it is something. And this guy's obviously the leader of the pack. <laughs> 